Hello everyone, today we're gonna learn about the coronary artery anatomy and I'm gonna help you visualize the coronary artery anatomy using our hand. So I'm pretty excited about this video. So let me just draw a structure of the ventricle real quick, um, just so you have a visualization of what the ventricle looks like. And I want you to imagine this as a 3D structure, which means that this part right here is gonna be the anterior surface of the ventricle and that's gonna be um, my fingers right here on the top in my hand and then this part right here is going to be the inferior surface of the ventricle so it's going to be like at the bottom part of my hand okay so let's start off by drawing the aorta and the aorta on my hand is going to be from my index finger okay so um, the aorta has the right coronary cusp, the left coronary cusp, and the non-coronary cusp. So from the left coronary cusp originates the left main. And left main travels between the aorta and the pulmonary trunk um, and the left atrial appendage. And it gives off the LAD and the left circumflex. So let's pause and talk about the left circumflex. So the left circumflex runs along the interventricular groove. So if this again is the ventricles, um, so my fingers are the ventricles and on the, on the top is the atria. Um, and the ventricles are divided into right and left by the interventricular groove or the ventricular septum. And so the LED, um, runs in the anterior interventricular groove from the base of the heart to the apex and it supplies the anterior wall and the apex of the heart okay um now let's talk about the right coronary artery so the right coronary artery comes off the right aortic cusp it runs in the interatrial groove so this again is the ventricle on the on top is the atria and we said that here is the aorta and near our index finger knuckle and so the rca kind of goes along the right inter in atrioventricular groups atria and ventricle so it goes around the right atrioventricular groove wraps around the heart and goes on the bottom on the inferior surface of the heart and gives the posterior descending artery so the thumb is actually the posterior descending artery so i'm just going to draw that i'm going to draw the rca as a dotted line once it's on the inferior surface of the heart and it gives the posterior descending artery so again if you were to visualize your heart in your fingers the lad was right here in the anterior interventricular groove going from the base to the apex so now we have the pda which is on the inferior aspect and it's um, in the posterior interventricular groove and it, it goes from the inferior surface to the apex of the heart um, the pda comes off from the right coronaries and the right coronary artery and the lad came off of the left main coronary artery now let's talk about the left circumflex artery so we had the left anterior descending that came off the left main and now we have another artery that kind of comes out and kind of wraps around the heart like that so that's the left circumflex artery and it it actually travels in the atrioventricular groove just like the um, right coronary artery travels in the interventricular groove wraps around the heart and terminates somewhat here um we will talk about right dominance versus left dominance in a bit basically if the left main artery uh i mean the left circumflex artery give the posterior descending artery that would be known as a left dominant and we're going to talk about it in a bit but um most of the time which is like about um i would say 60 percent of the time um 
the right coronary artery gives the PDA. So most of the time it's uh, a right dominant system. So we have the LED, the left circumflex, and then the RCA, which gives the PDA. Now let's talk about the interventricular septum. So it's um, hard to visualize the interventricular septum, but because it is, um, I'm gonna use a sticky note to show you what the interventricular septum looks like. So our fingers are the ventricles, right? So the interventricular septum is the yellow sticky note. This is the right interventricular septum, uh, the right ventricle, and the other half is the left ventricle. So now we have the LED, which is our middle finger, remember? So the, the shadow of my middle finger can be seen in the sticky note. So I'm just gonna draw the LED just like that, which is traveling uh, in the anterior interventricular group, and it gives off the septal perforators that supply the anterior two-third of the interventricular septum, okay? And we have the RCA that gave the PDA, and the PDA, which is our thumb, which I'm gonna draw with the blue pen right here, gives off the um, septal perforators again that supply the posterior one third of the interventricular septum. So now you have a visualization of what I'm talking about um, and what I mean by septal perforators. So we're gonna draw the septal perforators right here. So from the LAD, supplying the septum and from the RCA, I mean from the PDA supplying the posterior one third of the interventricular septum. Okay, so now we're gonna draw the marginal arteries. And these are basically, if you look at the, uh, if you, if you imagine your heart, um, when the RCA kind of moves around and turns to go to the inferior aspect of the heart, it gives off a acute marginal artery. And um, we're just gonna draw it right here. And it's hard to remember acute marginal arteries from the RCA. So I remember it by the mnemonic arm, which is acute marginal, is from the right coronary artery. And similarly, when the left, cor left circumflex artery wraps around the um, lateral aspect of the heart, um, it gives off the obtuse marginal artery. Well, it gives off um, a number of obtuse marginal and they're labeled as OM1, OM2. So the way I remember that the obtuse marginal is from the left circumflex artery is OLA. So the word OLA kind of reminds me that obtuse is from the left circumflex artery. Um, so I was saying that, you know, they can be named as OM1, OM2. And similarly, the... Um, the septal perforators can also be known as septal 1, septal 2, um, the, the marginal, um, the acute marginal arteries can also have names like AM1, AM2. Um, the LAD, which is in the inter, anterior interventricular groove, can also give diagonals and these diagonal branches predominantly supply the left, the anterior and lateral aspect of the left ventricle. And so these are named as D1, D2, diagonal one, diagonal two, diagonal three. And um, like I was saying, the septal perforators can also be named as S1, S2, S3. So that's, so that's the major role of the left system, right? So we have the left, main artery or the left main coronary artery right here 
going down and giving the LED which supplies the anterior aspect of the left ventricle, the apex and somewhat of the lateral wall. It also is supplying um, our interventricular septum, the anterior two-thirds of the interventricular septum. So this is our LED right here. We have our left circumflex that wraps around in the in atrioventricular groove and goes to the back side. And it gives the obtuse marginal or the OM branches. So as you can see, majority of the left ventricle is supplied by the left main, the LED, the left circumflex. The right also has an important role. So when the right coronary artery gives off the acute marginals, goes back and then gives off the PDA. It also supplies the AV node and it supplies the AV node in about 80 to 90 percent of the population and it also gives a sinoatrial branch that supplies the SA node in about 40 percent of the people. So the right system is predominantly supplying the nodes and the left system is predominantly supplying the left ventricle. Now there are exceptions to this. So the, the system that I've drawn right now is a right dominant system because the PDA was given off by the right circumflex artery which I've drawn in blue. But if suppose the left circumflex artery which kind of went behind on the inferior su surface and kind of stopped there if it goes down and so if this was my LED and then it's my left circumflex is my index finger coming across at the post base of the heart and if it goes down and becomes kind of my thumb just like that and it becomes the PDA then we say that the system is left dominant so and they sometimes ask, how do we determine dominance? So the dominance is determined by the posterior descending artery. And the way I remember this is the D. So posterior descending artery is the dominating artery. So I'm just gonna write that here. And which side of the coronary anatomy gives the posterior descending artery determines the dominance so posterior descending posterior dominating artery so if it's given by the rca it's a right dominant system and if it's given by the left circumflex artery then it is the left dominant system okay so that's all hope you had fun learning and stay awesome. I kind of want to give you like a quick recap of the video just because it's so hard to remember. I mean, it took me a while to get used to the coronary anatomy. So let's do like a real quick recap, okay? So we have the aorta, which is the index finger. It gives the left main. The left main gives the LED, which goes down the interventricular groove from the base to the apex of the heart, supplies the apex of the heart. We have the left circumflex, which kind of goes around the heart. It gives the obtuse marginal arteries, the OM1s, OM2s, and then goes to the inferior aspect of the heart and terminates there. Then we have the RCA, which comes from the right coronary cusp. It goes along the right atrioventricular groove, goes at, at the back side of the heart, supplies the AV node, the SA node, and then gives the PDA, which runs along the posterior interventricular septum, supplies the inferior aspect of the heart, and reach, um, reaches the apex to, re, um, to meet the LAD. And that is pretty much it. 
Alright, hope this was helpful. Stay awesome.